Hello guys and guysettes, if that is even a thing these days. Well, you never know, there's a lot of things that we accept these days, even if it's not normal or, well, you know what I mean. So, I wonder what my pronoun is. I wonder. I can identify as whatever I want to these days. <laughs> anyway, it's time to answer some of your questions. For those of you that were kind enough to actually get involved in on my Q&A. No excuse for not seeing it because there's a video on there. I left it for a few days and a few days have passed. So I thought, okay, why not? Let's answer some questions. Okay, so the first line of questions comes from Pete Beckett. I have a couple of questions. One, what is your favorite series on the Mega Drive slash Genesis? And why is it Columns? Haha, uh -huh, joke, nobody likes Columns. Okay, first of all, um, Columns. I actually like Columns. It's one of those games which I, puzzle games, which I actually liked. I thought the colors were nice and the music was pretty cool. And I spent quite a bit of time trying to beat my high score. And the last time I played it uh, with a friend was probably about 10 years ago, something like that. And yes, I have played Tetris in between that time, but it's a little bit unfair. Two, what is my favorite series on the Mega Drive? That's a good question, but I don't really have one at the moment. If I was to say any game, I don't know if it counts as a series, but um, probably would have to say Toad Gemini, those Toad Gemini games. I've uh, played the first two. Uh, the second one was my most favourite one. I've played the third one on the Xbox as well, but that's on the Xbox quite a few um, many years after the second one was made. But there was something about the Toad Gemini games that I really liked, but I don't know if it counts as a series. But other than that, I wouldn't know what to say because there's quite a few good Mega Drive games out there and which I really like. Or for the American viewers, I know some of you are American, you're American watching. The Genesis. What sounds better, the Mega Drive or the Sega Genesis? Hmm, I'm going for the Mega Drive. I'm just being biased. I love the Mega Drive name. Two. How do you feel about journalistic writing article clearly for the sole reason being rage baiting to get clicks? Um, I feel like they need to grow up, for starters, and stop doing that. Secondly, and thirdly, Combine the first two things that I said and grow for that. That's what they should do. Definitely. If they're writing something just to get clicks. It's not very really, um, honourable. It's not very uh, authentic, is it? Just to get clicks. That's like clickbaiting on YouTube. Like trying to show an image of a woman with her bazookas out on the thumbnail. Only for the video to be shown nothing of that. You know, clickbaits. Not good. Not good. It is. What do you feel is the best 2D and 3D Mario games? Ooh, okay. 2D and 3D Mario games. Mm. Well, one of my personal favourites on the 2D spectrum of Mario games is definitely Super Mario Bros. 3. Was it Mario Bros. 3? I think it's Mario Bros. 3. Anyway, you know what I mean. And Super Mario World, that one's a really good one. I would have said Super Mario um, The Lost Levels, but I'm not going to say that one. I think Super Mario 3 and Super Mario World is the two better Mario games um, out of uh, The Lost Levels and the first game. I mean, the first game is an absolute gem, it's an absolute classic, but one of my personal favourites is Mario Bros. 3, and one that was really good was uh, Super Mario World. Now for the 3D ones, see I need to catch up on my 3D Mario games because I've hardly played any on the Wii, so I've not played the Mario Galaxy titles, um, but one of my personal favourites is the N64 version, I do like that one, so Super Mario 64, that's definitely up there, and many people may disagree, but it's a personal favourite, so that can't be argued with. Um... I haven't played Super Mario Odyssey yet, so I would really like to try that. So at the moment, um, only those games, all I can say is just those games. Because so, until I actually play the other Super Mario games, then um, I'll probably update that question sometime in the near future. Give me about 10 or 20 years when I move into a better home, when I can actually 
get my other systems out, then I'd be bloody playing them. Anyway, thank you very much for your questions, Pete, mate. Really appreciate it. And actually, just before I go on to the next person for their questions, upon further uh, reflection, I have played other 3D Mario games. I just didn't really think too much about them. Um, so I've played the new Super Mario Bros. Uh, Wii. I thought that one was alright game. I have also got this one on the Switch, which is right here, if I can get it out. Yeah, that's right. New Super Mario Bros. U Deluxe. I thought that was a nice addition of the game. That was pretty cool. And I've played the DS version of Super Mario Bros. That was a good game. Um, so, so while one of my most personal favourites is Super Mario 64, out of those games I've just mentioned there, I'm going to have to say that the one I actually really do like is uh, probably the Wii version because I actually, something was I enjoyed about the Wii version. I played it a lot with my friends as well uh, back when after it was released and we had such a good time in it. So I have to say the Mario Brothers on the Wii. That's a really good one too. Okay, we have Zack Pack. What kind of content on YouTube is your favourite to watch? Ooh, this is a good question. Let's have a think. What is my favourite to watch? Well, I really do like movie reviews and movie analysis. Analysis? Movie analysis uh, content. So, like the Critical Drinker, Mauler, and other film review buffs out there on the internet, on YouTube. Because I love to hear their opinions on the movies and things like that. And it helps me with my own movies um, when I want to give my own opinion. Obviously, I'll give mine before I watch theirs, but if I've really watched their content on, on general, then, you know, whatever. I like to watch video game plays with gaming commentary. So if I'm watching a video game play, I like to have the commentary. I mean, that's how I started out on YouTube back on 2009, all those years ago. When I used to watch certain accounts and they used to give video game plays, they used to have their commentary on top. So some channels like Steve Benway, Lawn Boys Post 1975, and later on it became the 16-bit brothers. Uh, I really enjoyed all sorts of content like that. Um, I like commentary channels. The commentary is really good. Not the drama-related stuff, but you know the stuff where he just makes jokes and stuff like that. Um, but probably my favourite to watch. That's a tough one. I do like gaming content a lot. I don't like boring gaming content, pretty much like what my channel is, because a lot of people don't watch me. So I'm, I get the message loud and clear. It's not what you don't say. It's what you don't say. It's not what you don't say. It's what you don't say. Okay, so I do like my gaming commentary a lot, but I don't like um, stale gaming stuff, you know. I like gaming reviews. I like people's opinions on games, whether, it, whether I agree or disagree with it. You know, people need to learn to agree on the points that will not agree, but they need to learn to accept the fact that if you don't like a certain game, then just accept it. People act like overgrown crybabies these days. So if I said I don't like a certain game series, which I have done, and on Facebook I was pretty much shot at for it, so to speak, by these redneck um, neckbeard types and these other people who just couldn't stand my opinion on it. I was like, mate, just grow up. I'm going after the question. But my favourite type is um, definitely gaming content, reviews, opinions on games. People who just are passionate about talking about their hobby, which I can very much relate to, that kind of thing. Then second, a close second would actually have to be film analysis and movie reviews, definitely, up there. Good question, Zach, good question. What game console slash S consoles appeal to you most? Okay, which game consoles appeal to me the most? Right, I'm gonna have to think on this one a little bit. Up there, without any thought, easily, number one is definitely the Sega Dreamcast, definitely. That console appeals to me the most, right? Then after that would actually have to be the PlayStation 2, that very much appeals to me. Then probably after that would be the SNES, Super Nintendo Entertainment System, that appeals to me. The Nintendo 64, 
that appeals to me absolutely so I would say that these four mainly and let's go for number another one number five the PlayStation 1 let's go for that one these consoles appeal to me the most favorite flavor of crisps have a good one any crisps that has the flavor of barbecue or cheese and onion mainly those are my two favorite ones definitely and I will have a good one thank you very much for your question Zach I really appreciate the fact that you joined in thank you very much and we have on a retro tip do you have a favorite retro game that you have discovered since doing YouTube that you missed out on back in the day hope you are well now very good question on a retro tip yes there have been video games um, that I've discovered through YouTube that I've missed out back on in the day uh, both those um, on your channel I've discovered video games that I've missed out on, whether it's on the Mega Drive, Sega, or Nintendo. I've actually commented on quite a few of your videos, and um, definitely, there's definitely games out there which I've missed. Um, and I've watched people like Steve Benway, the 16 bit brothers, um, or Long Boys Post 1975. I do like watching my British YouTubers a little bit more than anyone else, so I get their sense of humour and I feel good, like friendly connection there. So we start things off by being British. Hey, there we go. Um, so yeah, there's been definitely a lot of games which I've missed out on uh, that I've actually come to know through YouTube. That's a really good question, actually. For the life of me, I can't really think of them all. I can't think of anyone in particular, but there has been quite a few. But as an adult now, hopefully I can try and find some retro shops, because I've only just recently moved house into a certain area which I don't like, or which I didn't move through in the first place, and um, hopefully I can try and find some shops that actually sell some retro stuff, not just CEX all the time. You know, their prices are a bit. Yeah. So, yeah, thank you very much for your question on a retro tip. Really good question, definitely. Okay, next we have Pow Block Gaming. What's your opinion on those who only follow a channel for one particular game? You know, I know what I think of that. I think it's absolutely pathetic. It's stupid. It's retarded. It's dumb. It's absolutely moronic. <laughs> no, no, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Um, for those particular people that follow a channel just for a certain game, I wouldn't say there's nothing wrong with that. Because there's a channel that I uh, am subscribed to, who actually does um, Dead by Daylight content and. Um, he, that's the main focus of his channel because uh, he streams a lot of Dead by Daylight and he does a lot of content on it. It's good content as well, good funny content. And um, just using this channel as an example, uh, I do feel like um, with certain content and that's your main focus and you know he's going to draw in a crowd for a particular community or for a particular video game, I think that's really good. You know, because it's good to see that a game, a certain game that's been shown much love and it's got a fan base going for it and if you get a lot of people coming all over all, all over from the world to have a look at your channel and be, through word of mouth and other people showing your videos and saying oh check out this uh, Dead by Daylight content creator, he's good, he's funny which this particular person is, he's one of my favourite Dead by Daylight content creators then yeah, uh, why not go for it, I mean I've had people on my channel who don't really stay for one particular game, so because I've actually done gameplays of all different games and I like to keep my channel um, openly free of that, I would only focus on a particular game if I'm actually doing a let's play of it or things of that nature. But um, there's of hundreds and thousands of other games you could explore. So um, people who actually sub subscribe to someone's channel and because of that one certain game, I wouldn't say there's nothing wrong with that. No, that's absolutely fine. I mean, they're, they're, it's their right to do that as much as it is our right to have a look at all different games on form all different accounts. My, me personally, if I was to watch someone play a particular game, it's because of that person and that content. However, if they went into other games, I'm pretty sure I don't think I'd just be interested. It's one of those things. But I actually like watching people play all sorts of different games. Keeps the account fresh. And from a new perspective of someone who actually has or has not played this certain game. <laughs> what are some newer games you're interested in playing? Um, none in particular that I can think of off the top of my head. But I have, to have a little bit of a thought here. Um, 
Maybe that new Resident Evil game, Resident Evil Village, definitely. I still gotta play number seven Biohazard. That I've still gotta play that. I've got it on my Xbox One. I wouldn't mind playing that new PlayStation 5, that demolition racing game. I've always been into my demolition racing games ever since um had one on the PlayStation 1, Destruction Derby, and I like the fact that Race Driver Grid implemented it. And I like the fact that Wreckfest has it. I've, I've always been a sucker for demolition racing games. That one on the PS5. Uh, that Little Big Planet Sackboy game. I look forward to trying that out. Maybe Crash Bandicoot 4. Um, Elder Scrolls uh, 6. I look forward to trying that one out. That, that definitely has caught my eye. Maybe State of Decay number 3. Definitely because I've got an Xbox. So if I was to get an Xbox One. Sorry. Xbox Series X over the PS5, it would definitely be for that game, definitely. Um, other than that, um, I'm not really too excited or interested in seeing what other games I might be wanting to play, because um, the last game I got excited about was an utter, utter, utter disappointment, and that game was Marvel Avengers, and uh, wow. And that game was delayed as well, and it still turned out to be a flop for me. Ugh, it's floppy as a floppy disk. Could not get into it at all. The gameplay was so boring and repetitive. I'm like, anything I've ever played... Actually, no. It's pretty much like a lot of things I've played in the modern age. Utterly disappointing that game was. So I'm hoping these next games, maybe a few others that I've not mentioned, that I've probably seen on the, uh, the Sony reveal, the, the uh, Sony when they revealed their games um, hopefully maybe some of them as well and let's not forget Star Wars Squadrons I look forward to trying that one out I love my Star Wars games and if they make another Star Wars game um, Co KOTOR 3 Knights of the Old Republic hopefully it's going to be a new game I've heard rumours about that. I'm definitely excited for that one. Because Knights of the Republic on the Xbox. One of my favourite games ever. I absolutely love it. Got my orange juice here. Nah, it's tequila really. It's tequila. Name origin. My name origin. Right. Um, not many people have asked me about my name origin. So I really appreciate you asking that. Pal. Thank you very much. Um, right. My name origins. It's a little bit of a story to it of how, not how, but why I chose it. But uh, the how part is probably, um, how did I come up with it? I'll take that bit first. Well, the Dr. Virtual. How did I get this name? My name origin came from the fact that I, uh, I actually wanted to become a doctor, you know, and um, not really one. It's just what I call myself. I am a gaming doctor, however. So ever since when I was like in my teenhood years, I thought when I was enjoying science, I thought, yeah, okay, I could become a doctor one day. You know, when I was growing up, um, then I found out there was a lot of hard work involved. <laughs> and uh, I never really pursued that interest. I went into construction instead uh, back in my life. And, um, but uh, that always stuck with me, the fact that like, I always want to become a doctor one day in any given subject, something that's, that stands out to me, you know, something like science or medical doctor, or, you know, I've um, got healing hands. <clears throat> These hands are meant for digging, digging up hearts. So the virtual side is the obviously the video gaming side to it. So it's all about the virtual realm the video gaming realm so that's where the virtual site came into it so it was a cross between my hopes of becoming a doctor and uh, my video gaming hobbies so I thought combine them but I never called myself that if I would have called myself that when I very first started YouTube there would have been absolutely no reason for me to have several accounts through the years of which I've had I would have stuck with that one account and that one account only and I wish I did that first I was known as different names on YouTube so good old Dr. Virtual yes that's how name origins but how did I choose it for this account well some time ago back in 2011 or 12 me and my good friend Lee my best mate we was um playing some games together then we was then we made some YouTube videos together 
uh, our fir his first time of being on live camera. I don't have him anymore, unfortunately. And um, well, the reason why I don't have him is because I had a mobile phone or a cell phone to work with, and I didn't really have a PC. And um, when we both decided on what we we're going to call ourselves back then, I immediately thought of the name Doctor Virtual. Uh, he called himself something else, a name which I absolutely can remember because I've named him a few times in some of the uh, video game plays that I've actually made um, on this account. Um, so I thought, Dr. Virtual, that sounds good. Yeah, maybe I should have that as my new account, which is this account. So when I started back in 2013, I thought I'd call myself that. And the name stuck, and it stuck with me ever since, and I don't know why I didn't call myself it sooner. That's a big massive opportunity wasted there, but I've had to had to work with it and I've enjoyed it actually, it sounds good, it rolls off the tongue nicely and I just, one of the names I actually enjoy, I call it on my PSN, my gamer tags and pretty much my online socials as well. So yeah, thank you very much for asking that pal, really good of you to ask me that. Okay, that brings my Q&A answers to a close. Thank you very much for joining in on this wonderful Q&A session. Hopefully you got to know me a little bit more. Hopefully the answers I gave were really, well, not really, really good, but hopefully they were satisfactory at best. So I don't know when the next time I'll be doing another one of these. Maybe the next time I actually have a little bit more subscribers who actually watch my videos and comment. Um, you didn't hear that bit. Trust me, you didn't hear it. And um, who knows, I might uh, have a lot more different questions uh, plagued up to me next time. So if you take good care of yourselves, fellow gaming minions, may Retro Gaming live on. I'm Dr. Virtual and the Gaming Doctor. You take good care of yourselves.